So remember how we said a storm was coming? It's here. We made it to Telluride. This is so cool. Oh! oh hey. <laughs> And today, we're going on an adventure. We'll be above 200 feet of cliffs the whole day. And now we are going to the main event, which is the most exposed part of the Via Parada. We're doing that? We are. Are you good? Am I good? I'm moving my feet. Wow. This is very intense. That was the scariest thing I've ever done. <laughs> We're Dennis and Liz, full-time travelers who spent the past three years exploring North America in an RV. In last week's episode, we explored the quaint mountain town of Crested Butte, where we had an awesome time drinking, eating, and hiking. After hearing a pretty big snowstorm was headed our way, we decided to go south to the town of Ure, where we pick you up in today's episode. So remember how we said a storm was coming? It's here. <laughs> Unfortunately, we were a little optimistic and thought we were actually gonna be able to go into the Black Canyon and the Gunnison today, exploring before the storm came, but we were very wrong. So now we're stuck, and by we, I mean Dennis is stuck, <laughs> trying to put the scooter back on the RV in the snow. Yeah, because I want to get it done. Yeah. <laughs> we have to stop in Montrose, which is a town about 25 minutes away from here, to pick up our new internet package, our SIM card that was shipped to a Walmart, or that was shipped somewhere, I don't even know. I think it's a Walgreens. And then we can head to Ure, our final destination, where we're going to a full hookup RV park because we ain't playing with no snow. I'm not gonna lie, it is really cold out there. <laughs> we were not prepared for this. By the way, just so everyone knows, it is September 8th and they're expecting 6 to 12 inches of snowfall. Colorado, you are crazy. Just a few days ago, we were literally sweating and getting suntans. People were out at the lake and now it's snowing. Uh, we have never driven in weather like this either, so this will be an interesting drive today. Um, hoping everything goes very smoothly and uneventful arrival to Ure. We'll keep you updated, but we're just excited to have unlimited data again. to our full hookup site in Ure, where we stayed nice and warm inside the RV, working as the snow fell over the next few days. We were hoping for at least a few inches of snow here, but at 7,792 feet of elevation, the snow didn't stick very long. Other parts of Colorado at 8,500 feet of elevation or more saw several inches of snow that stuck around for a few days. Three days later, the sun was back and the snow was gone. We took advantage of the warmer weather, exploring the town. We walked around this charming old city, dubbed the Switzerland of America, before grabbing a snack and a few beers at Ure Brewing. On our last day, we went for a hike on Ure's perimeter trail a 5.6 mile moderate hike that loops around the entire town. There were three beautiful waterfalls to enjoy and tons of cool gems including passing through Box Canyon which is famous for its unique geological features and ice climbing in the winter time. While we enjoyed our time in Ure, we had big plans waiting for us until you ride. Another small mountain town just about an hour away. We made it to 
Telluride. We are at a beautiful free camping spot about 25-30 minutes outside of the city. And we arrived pretty late last night. We were lucky enough to have met up with Michelle and Lee from the RV Idiots. They've been following our channel for a long time and we were they told us that we were actually kind of like the inspiration for them to hit the road, which is amazing. Mind-boggling. Yeah. It's so cool yeah. to know that sharing our life and our experiences can inspire people to take action to to change the path of their life, right? To follow their own dreams. So very, very, very cool. It was wonderful meeting you two. Yes, thanks for the beers. Yes, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Today we spent some time working because we have a big adventure planned for tomorrow that's gonna take up most of our day. So even though it's a Sunday today, since we kind of create our own schedule, we were spent some time working today and we're done for the day and gonna go into Telluride to explore. I'm gonna walk around the town trying not to buy anything because it looks pretty expensive. Looks pretty expensive. It is pretty expensive. And we're gonna go on a gondola. No, not a gondola. What are they called? Ski lift. Ski lift. Is it a gondola? It's a gondola. Okay. We're gonna do that. Mm -hmm. So let's go to town. made it into town. We are just pretty much walking the historic area today, just looking at all the cute little shops. We came in and got ramen last night for dinner because we were not in the mood to cook after a long travel day. It was so good. We should just do that again tonight. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's a little bit expensive here. Remember those uh, ritzy prices mountain we were talking about? Yeah, mountain prices we were talking about. This, like many other Colorado towns, originated as a small mining town. And back when it was in its heyday, it had more money here in Telluride, this tiny little town than the whole city of Manhattan, all from gold. Pretty crazy. We also learned some other cool little fun facts about the town. This was the first city in the entire world to have AC power, which it's alternating current for those fans that follow us in solar. <laughs> and this is also where The Hateful Eight was filmed. So I'll have to watch The Hateful Eight tonight and kind of see if we can see some places. Unfortunately, most of the shops are closed. They're only offering to go. So we're getting some coffee to go so we can kind of walk around and enjoy, and then we'll go to the gondola. But if you are coming here during COVID, masks are required as you're walking around. If you go into any of the shops, people are pretty strict about it here. So it's nice that they're taking it seriously, but you don't really get the full experience visiting right now. Yeah. yeah. 1889, Bush Cassidy and the Sundance Kid had their first major robbery that made them famous right here in this town. They stole 24 grand in 1889. We're making it to the station just in time to get on the gondola because it is starting to sprinkle. Hopefully it just stays a sprinkle because we are on the scooter to get back. Yeah. We made it to the top. You can actually get off. They have a restaurant at the very top. But I think a lot of people come up here to do mountain biking or trails. And if you want, you can keep going into the next town, which I think we're gonna do. So this gondola ride is the only free gondola ride in all of North America. It's available to the public for free. And it takes you from Telluride up to the top of the mountain, and then it takes you down to the city of Mountain Village. And when I say city, I'm using that term rather loosely. It's a ski resort village town with a few restaurants. Since it started raining, we are not going to explore, but we are enjoying the views from the gondola ride. <laughs>
Good morning, friends. It is another day until you ride. And today, we're going on an adventure. The setting around me is different because we woke up really early this morning, got on the scooter, and drove 40 minutes to Bridal Vales Falls parking lot. There's a trail here. It goes up to a gorgeous waterfall. It's one of the top things to do if you're coming to Telluride. It's beautiful, and we'll show you that in just a second. But we're not here for the waterfall. We are going to be taking you on the Via Ferrata. And Ure and in Telluride, they have a Via Ferrata course, which if you're not familiar with it, we weren't either in Cresta Butte. The bartender at the Eldo told us, if you're coming here, you have to do Via Ferrata. So we ended up working with the company Mountain Trip, and they're going to be taking us on a guided tour across a ledge up a cliff of the mountain. We got our helmets. I'm a little nervous. But the guy knows what he's doing, and we're going to be safe. I think it's going to be an adrenaline-filled day. We all run as Marcus, work for a mountain trip. Via Ferrata is rad. It's a super fun route, and really, if you can hike, you can do it. So it'll be super fun. Via Ferrata is technically a free activity if you have your own gear, which you're, I'll show you the gear that we're going to be doing, and you kind of have experience doing this, you can definitely come do this here in Ure or in Telluride. And honestly, there's Via Ferrata courses all across the world but we don't know what we're doing. We've never done anything like this before. So we hired a guide. So if you're coming here and it's your first time, I definitely suggest the guide route. One big waterfall in this trail, there's two. Three. Three! So we're all, the one down below, and then there's this one, and then Bridal Veil is where we end. We made it to the top. This is Bridal Veils, which is the tallest free-flowing waterfall in all of Colorado. I definitely think this is a C if you're coming to Telluride. You can drive a car up here, but suggested to have like high clearance four-wheel drive because it's definitely not a paved road or you can take the trail. It's a moderate trail, I would say, but it's been fun and there's lots of waterfalls along the way. We're almost there. Then the real adventure starts. So we'll actually throw on our helmets here and we'll wear our helmets for the rest of the day. Gotta keep our heads safe. Man bun and all. We will be above 200 feet of cliffs the whole day. So our first way to mitigate that risk is actually not even in our harnesses. It's in our own personal movement. There will be some spots where we're super exposed, where the trail kind of drops off and we have just the cliff itself. And for there, we're going to use our harnesses. There wouldn't really be a point in wearing a harness if we're not attached to something. So these are called Via Ferrata lanyards or just a Via Ferrata kit. And essentially what it is, is just a way to attach ourselves to our cables. Um, looking at one of these legs, one of these legs is actually strong enough to catch us. We just have two, so that way if we're passing certain parts of the cable, we're able to stay clipped into one at, this, at a time, right? Check you I'm out. I'm ready for my close up. <laughs> 200 feet up. Sweet. There's a lot of Via Prada's around the world. Some of them are like going through canyons. This one is like all the way, just a mountain traverse. And that's how Via Ferrata started. They started back in World War I in Italy to kind of get like troops through the Dolomites. It was a way to get troops in and out through the mountain ranges and kind of turned into more recreational in like the 80s or so. And now they're, they're popping up in the US a lot and in Europe, they're just totally booming. For the first half of the route, less cable work and more just hiking on the trail like we, we've been. And the second half is basically all cabled all the way through. So when we come up to the cable again, we're not multitasking, so we're not going to be like walking up to the cable and like unbuckling. Come up to the cable, you can grab the rock or even grab the cable. I like to grab the cable sometimes to give myself some extra space to clip. And then we're just doing one at a time. Once I know that they're both clipped on, I can start moving. I can have a third hand out for like extra support. 
I can also grab my lanyards, but make sure you grab below your clips. So that way you're not like panic gripping and opening up your... We just finished the first part or the first leg of the trip and now we are going to the main event which is the most exposed part of the Via Ferrata. I'm a little bit nervous. We've learned some new techniques to help us kind of traverse especially because there's going to be spots where there's really nothing but rocks. I wasn't really nervous and there's been like two times when I'm getting nervous. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Are you good? Am I good? Just breathe. Step back and take a breath. We're doing that? We are. You wanna just small steps, small baby steps. And we'll just get a glass. Nice and easy. I like him. I'm this close to crying because I'm so nervous. Are you like fine? You're totally fine right now? I mean, am I a hundred percent? No. But am I about to cry? No. <laughs> The crying moment. Has okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, right I'm now, good. I'm, let's so, see when I get Liz, out there. Liz, just just remember, you're you're strapped in to a steel cable. Yeah. Small baby steps. Small steps is all you need. Okay. Okay. Stick to the corners. And small baby steps. Got it. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm doing great. Yeah, you're doing great, babe. One step across, and then I step. This is our crux of the route. And what a crux is, is just the hardest part. And it's only the hardest part because it's just kind of awkward of a movement. Instead of having rungs up here, we're gonna have rungs at our hips, but we can use our body to our advantage, right? So here, like I said, we're gonna step on the corners. And I'm just kind of taking small steps across, making sure I'm moving my feet, making sure I'm breathing. And then once you're here, like, that's really where the awkward move is done. And then there's just a couple more big steps past here, but it's not too bad. It's just slow, small, easy steps. And remember that smearing technique, so not necessarily the exact okay. foot into the rock. And this your uh, your front. <laughs> You're good, babe. Step down and Killing it, crushing it. You just got past the the, the crux. You're good. I'm not, not scared, but try not to let fear take over as well. Yep. And now I'm at the crux. Yep. Wow. This is very intense. So are you, babe? Oh shit, this is. Yeah. Yes. Nice Good job. Oh wee, that was pushing it. That was. I'm proud of us. Though. How do you feel? Wow. That was awesome. Totally scary, but. Totally dope. Like, looking back on it, that was some cool 
should be. That was by far the most mentally challenging thing I have ever done. I was this close to crying the whole time. It was so scary, but it's so good to challenge yourself and push yourself out of your comfort zone. And I'm so glad that I did it. It just makes you realize how much more we're capable of and how much we let fear kind of stop us because I was okay. I did it, I made it. Oh, it's definitely good to push myself. We're not done yet. Yeah. Nice work. I also just want to say our guide Marcus has been amazing. I mean, he helped guide us and make us feel as comfortable as possible as you can pretty much hanging off of a cliff and climbing on rungs. I cannot imagine doing this without a guide. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. That was the scariest thing I've ever done. <laughs> We just got back to the scooter after a long, incredible day on the Via Ferrata. Still can't really believe that we just did that. <laughs> to celebrate our accomplishments of kind of facing fears, there's only one way to do it, really. That's beer. Oh. Hey guys, we are tired. Can we just talk about today? We challenged ourselves mentally and physically. I'm so thankful to Mountain Trip who took us and guided us on an incredible experience and made us feel safe and comfortable the whole time. Well, especially Marcus at Mountain Trip. Oh, he was so great. Yeah. He was the perfect guide. If you are looking to push yourself on an experience, if you're coming to the Telluride or Ori area, they do the Via Ferratas in both cities. They're very different experiences, so I definitely suggest maybe trying one or both if you have the mm -hmm. time or the finances for that. But if you're also in other areas, definitely check out Mountain Trip because they offer different um, experiences. Marcus is guiding the Denali Summit, so that's insane. And they also do rock climbing trips. They do Mount Everest Space Camp trips. They go all over the world for different um, like extreme activities, for sure. I hope you loved coming along on this journey as much as we loved bringing you along with us on this journey. And hopefully it inspired you to possibly get out of your own comfort zone. You don't have to go do a crazy Via Ferrata course to um, kind of face fears. There are things that we have every day in our lives that we constantly are holding ourselves back from, from experiencing, from doing, from trying. But for now, this is where we're going to shut the vlog down because we're actually so leaving tired. Colorado tomorrow. Yeah. And, and we need to get a good night's nice rest because we are both zonked. Yes. Tomorrow we say goodbye to our month and a half here in this beautiful state and we head on to our next destination, which is where we will pick you up in next week's vlog. Tell you ride, tell you ride, tell you ride, tell you ride. Hold. <laughs> We're literally right here, and some sort of delightful wild animal decided to take a poop right next to my flip flops. I'm so glad that it didn't poop on my flip flops. Although, if it had, it probably would have been an easier cleanup than this because it's still really fresh, really moist. Wet. Whose scat is that? Yeah, whose scat? Yeah, can someone tell me who decided to crap on my mat? My ears are popping. We're so high. Oh.